Good evening, Jamie McIntyre here, and in this episode for AustralianNationalReview.com, one of the few independent news sites left in Australia, uh, and in the world for that matter, so please support us. Tonight's topic, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Oxford vaccine um, that our dear Australian Prime Minister signed up, spent almost a billion dollars uh, in signing up uh, to give us a free COVID vaccine as you may have heard, has had some uh, nasty side effects, some very serious side effects, and has been put on pause. Um, let's talk about one of my pet topics about the fraud of the vaccine industry. I've studied this industry for six years, and I thank the brave doctors and scientists that many years ago sent detailed information exposing this fraud to Australian National Review. Before that, I was a clueless pro-vaxxer. Um, just thought what the media, mainstream media told us about vaccines, that there's great medical breakthrough and saved all these lives and were 100% safe and effective and necessary. I simply believed it to be true because our health minister would say that and the media and I never bothered to question how foolish was I? Is that true? Why didn't I question? Because I just was lazy, busy with other things and just dumbness of me assumed they would never lie to me. But we know that's not to be true. Is that correct? We know mainstream media lies and you should assume is lying to you until it can be proven in evidence otherwise. Um, so yes, they were lying to me and others that vaccines are safe in this great medical breakthrough. They are neither. They're neither safe nor effective in most cases. In many cases, not even necessary uh, and certainly uh, um, not this great medical breakthrough that those who tell us it is, guess who's telling us? They're being paid to tell us that. I mean, why would you believe something? They're spruiking, drug spruikers. And uh, I have very little respect for drug spruikers that push deadly and dangerous and unproven drugs upon the populace, especially elderly and innocent babies and other parents, kids. I think it's disgusting. But anyhow, let's talk about this COVID vaccine because what I'm excited about this is that they want to push this COVID vaccine. So first of all, Victoria, Dan Andrews uh, and Billy Boy Gates and these other morons in the world uh, are lying to you. Bill Gates is telling the world that, well, you're just going to have to get used to new COVID normal lockdowns until the vaccine comes out. Well, what they're trying to do is extort you folks. It's kind of like a mafia trick. Is that right? Well, just get used to being locked down because the only way out is going to be if you get you take this vaccine, which is not tested. It's going to be rushed to market and it can only get rushed to market with emergency powers. There's no alternative effective treatment. That's why we've been running studies and overdosing people in hydroxychloroquine because, and this is Bill Gates has been doing this, by the way, because by overdosing and killing people with hydroxychloroquine, we've been able to falsify studies to show that's dangerous because we can't have any alternative treatment because that's been a very effective treatment, very cheap. We make no money out of that. We've got to get rid of that so our vaccines can be pushed through without any proper testing under emergency powers. Did you realize that? And we want you to take it and trust us. Trust Bill Gates. Um, he's not a doctor. He's worth $105 billion. His dad was a con man and speared for the Rockefellers. And if you don't know much about the Western medical system, folks, I dare you, I dare and challenge you to go and research the Rockefellers Institute uh, contribution to Western medicine. Mm. And then see whether you trust medical, uh, Western medicine with your entire life. Um, so, so there we have it, folks. We have a situation where they want to extort you uh, like mafia, that you just lock the lockdowns away. And Dan Andrews, well, once we have a vaccine, you're going to you know, be let you out of your lockdowns. Well, first of all, it's a lie. It's a lie in a couple of ways. One, as soon as the vaccine comes out, they're lying to you, they're going to let you out. They never intend letting you out. They're going to keep you some level of lockdown, surveillance, new COVID normals, they call it forever. That is their plan. It's a totalitarian, globalist, communist takeover of the world. And now you're under surveillance, they have a surveillance. Every aspect of your life will be controlled by a chip they wish to insert you. And now some people think this is a conspiracy. There's this vaccine chip that's going to be in the vaccine. They think it's a conspiracy theory. I'm sorry, folks. They're already doing human trials right now. You can go and do your own bloody research. If you don't believe me or you don't want to trust our sources, AustralianNationalReview.com, go and check it out. It exists. It's, it, yes, it's a conspiracy, but it's now proven. That's coming, 5G. Is 5G not coming? Of course it is. 5G, a health issue? Most likely. Even if you haven't done any study. But it's all designed to control every aspect of your life because that's what communists do, you know. Um, and with technology, you've never been able to do it in the past, but all these new technology that's merging is now allowing a small elite handful of 
people that think they know best for you to control every aspect of your life. You want to live in a totalitarian future like China and have a social score and not be able to go out after 8 p.m. at night and have a curfew and not be able to go for more than five kilometers from your house. Oh, wow, it sounds like Victoria. Uh, then get used to it, folks, because they are lying to you about a couple of things. They're lying to you about, number one, that they're going to let you out after a vaccine for COVID. No, they're not. They're just saying that to you to lie to you. And they'll be like, well, you're going to have an annual vaccine, like the flu vaccines. They've never been able to find an effective vaccine for coronaviruses for decades. So do you think they're going to find one for that? So that's number two. Is they're going to find an effective vaccine. Is number two lie. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I'll bet a million dollars is another bet. A million dollars, it's not going to happen. Simply will not find an effective, safe COVID vaccine. There's a million dollar bet. Uh, please take it up. Now, I'm mean, used to taking doing bets because I was the first person to challenge the vaccine vaccine industry many years ago in a, in a challenge that went viral after I wrote my first book on this topic, The Great Vaccine Con, which you can download for free at AustralianNationalReview.com. Just enter your emails there as a free subscriber and you'll get a copy to that book at AustralianNationalReview.com. Uh, I'm not here to make money out of the fraud of the vaccine industry. Uh, unlike that industry is doing 59 billion in sales and that in that book, and I've warned for people for years, they intended to bring in mandatory vaccinations by 2024 to boost their sales from 59 billion to 100 billion plus. A COVID vaccine will possibly uh, do 100 billion in sales on its own. Big business. That's why Bill Gates was caught boasting on TV, a 20 to one return on his vaccine investments. Not the only reason he's doing this, folks. He's got plenty of money. But it's power. He thinks he's going to save all these lives. And he's been, he learned, him and Fauci learned about the vaccine scam, how to, how to scam uh, and lie with statistics from the AIDS scam. You know, AIDS, they did the same similar scam. Not that AIDS wasn't deadly, but to make it look like it was a really big pandemic, much worse than it was to rip off taxpayers for hundreds of billions of dollars from dumb, naive politicians and dumbass governments, is that they just they kept expanding the definition of what, what you died of to be included as AIDS. So the graph could keep going up kind of a little bit like COVID. Do I have anything in 2020? Oh, no, you didn't get run over by a tram in Melbourne. It was COVID, of course. And then, but of course, we now know that only 9% of the deaths in Australia, they've told us, that trustworthy media of yours has told you and the government, died of COVID. Only 6% in America died of COVID. 180,000 deaths in America on COVID. No, it isn't. 9,000. Wow, that's not even as bad as a very, 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 very mild flu season, but we can't call it a flu now, can we, Jamie? Well... You can call it a flu or common cold if you look up in the medical journals what it's listed as, but I'm sure they're updating those right as we speak. So no, we can't call it a flu because, wow, it's not scary enough. 12% uh, in Italy died, but that's been reassessed. National Health Institute come up with those figures. Earliest assessment of deaths, 12%. Being now revised down to 1.2%. And you watch even the existing deaths are under investigations when they really died of COVID. Not saying COVID isn't deadly. Uh, I'm suggesting the people behind it are far more deadly. Uh, the virus that comes with it called communism, socialism, to globalist takeover, far more deadly. Um, but I think you already know that, don't you? If you don't, um, we need you to get educated. Oh, sounds like a conspiracy theory. No, uh, conspiracy theories, you'll find plenty of them on CNN, Channel 7 News, Channel 9 News, ABC, etc., Fairfax Newspapers. Uh, and uh, they'll expect you to believe all their conspiracy theories without evidence. Uh, if you think what I'm talking about is conspiracy theories, well, let's compare it to your conspiracy theories being fed to you on the daily news, and I'll s and let's see which one actually backs up with evidence. I'll put a million dollars up that what we're talking about here is backed by evidence. What the Channel 7 and CNN, etc., are talking about, globalized falsified pandemic, is nothing but a fraud. It's falsifying. So... The Oxford vaccine. You know, here's the interesting thing. It had some adverse reactions. The vaccine industry, where Robert Kennedy is someone I look up to, Robert Kennedy Jr., the nephew of John F. Kennedy, the great president of America um, that was assassinated by the deep state. And uh, so Robert Kennedy has become, you know, a reluctant hero or reluctant advocate for uh, I used to be environmental lawyer to uh, about the vaccine industry and exposing the fraud as well. And he also put up a hundred thousand to a challenge that I put up you know many years ago to prove that vaccines were independently safe, effective, 
uh, and necessary. Uh, Robert De Niro, the actor, has an autistic son caused by vaccines. He also put up 100000 as well. So it wasn't the only one that put money up to challenge the industry and anyone for that matter uh, to put up or shut up if you think vaccines are safe, etc. They're simply not. But now it's good to see this is where it's going to backfire over the coronavirus vaccine and this war, vaccine water race. Who gets the first one? It's so fraudulent. Um, so it's because it's never had scrutiny before. So adverse reactions, for that even not to be able to, for them to cover that up and come out, pretty serious adverse reactions. Folks, these vaccines will kill more than COVID has. They'll injure more than COVID can. I mean, why would we magically intervene? Ask your politicians this. Ask your doctors this, because many doctors and uh, would have to agree with this. Why would you medically intervene with a vaccine uh, on healthy people that aren't affected by COVID, uh, that aren't going to die by COVID, aren't going to get sick by COVID, um, to pre pre supposedly protect people that the only people that can hurt, COVID can hurt, is people already sick and dying. And why should we blame COVID on it? Because they're dying of something else. Um, there is no reason. And why would we need a vaccine when 99.9% .9 of people aren't affected? And why would we need a COVID vaccine when we have effective treatments already, such as hydroxychloroquine and zinc and other things? In, uh, in a vector, I think it is. Sorry, I can't pronounce that correctly. Another one as well. So, of course, we don't because the vaccines, apart from being a massive profit uh, agenda and from a fraudulent industry, these vaccine cronies such as Bill Gates and who leads the show. Uh, just a little bit on that. Bill Gates, you might want to check him out. Uh, do you know he said he was going to eliminate polio with vaccines? Guess what's happened? 72% of, of polio in the world today is actually caused by Billy Gates vaccines. He's dodgy for vaccines. Uh, many women can no longer have a child because Bill Gates and guess who got caught out. Now, this is not even conspiracy theory. This can be proven. Putting sterilizers in vaccines to deliberately prevent them having children. Bill Gates thinks he's God, playing God. How would you feel if you found out you're, you can never have a child because some fucker called Bill Gates thought he had the right to remove that right from you and play God? Bill Gates is a dangerous threat to humanity. And I ask global citizens around the world, including Australia, what must we do with Bill Gates if he's a dangerous threat to humanity? Now, Bill Gates has been classified, has said that. Yes, vaccines can kill and injure. Well, at least you admit it that, Billy boy. Uh, but it's a small sacrifice to pay for the greater good. Here's my message I think we should send to Bill Gates. Um, I think you, Bill Gates, should be the small sacrifice to pay for the greater good of humanity. And you never know what could happen, Mr. Gates. Um, so... We don't need Bill Gates' as vaccines. We don't need Bill Gates a being, who isn't even a doctor, being our global health minister, all running the new world, uh, the new one world order agenda through the WHO, the World Health Organization, which if you know, a motion passed in European uh, Parliament in 2010 said the drug companies, vaccine makers un have unhealthy levels of influence over. Uh, guess who? The World Health Organization. Billy Boy Gates runs and owns who? You don't believe me? Just... Go and check who's the largest private donor and bigger than any other country donor to who. The president of who is, claims to be a doctor, is not a doctor, has been on the payroll of Billy Gates for some time. Um, just like our Victorian health minister as well. Um, probably heard that already or maybe you wouldn't have heard on mainstream media. He failed to disclose his conflicts of interest from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And guess who Dan Andrews, dictator Dan Andrews, takes his orders from? Brett Sutton, the Victorian health minister, and guess who he has financial conflicts of interest with? Bill Gates, and guess who sets the guidelines around the world to medical associations and to health ministers, including in Australia, the World Health Organization, which is owned, sold, and controlled by Bill Gates. You doubt that? I've got a million dollars to challenge you. So put up or shut up if you don't believe what I'm saying. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. I'm telling you what is happening. You can go and check that out for yourself. Or you can go back and listen to the conspiracy theories fed to you by CNN, Channel 7, and others uh, around the world that wish to lie to you and tell you conspiracy theories on a day-to-day -day basis. Make sense? So very quickly in summary, the lie that's been told to you that things will return to normal only after you take a COVID vaccine, uh, firstly, is a lie. They don't intend to letting you out of lockdowns. That's just a lie to keep it going that much longer. And two, the COVID vaccine, they'll never kind of effective COVID vaccine. Did you know there had never, ever has any vaccine on the market today ever been properly safety tested? 
Can you believe that? That can't be true. Except it is. Show me proof of any vaccine. It's had double blind placebo, gold standard, industry standard, uh, safety studies done. Hasn't happened, never been done. So there should be a moratorium on all vaccines for five years and two, they can all go and be properly safety tested. How many people died of the flu versus the flu vaccine? Why did they um, vaccinate all the elderly and aged care homes in Australia and in Italy and in America with the four in one new flu vax just a few months before? knowing that increases the chance of dying by coronaviruses by 36%. US defense studies show that. Also in the uh, British medical journey, you can see the studies they've done on that. Um, so don't take my word for it. So why do they go and, vac and vaccinate the elderly and the, the staff, the doctors and nurses in Australia have to be mandatory vaccinated. They're working with them and you couldn't even go and visit your elderly without being vaccinated. So I can't imagine how this would not contribute to increasing the deaths um, that they can count as coronavirus, especially the doctors warned last year in October, November in Italy, that there was a spike in deaths in the elderly uh, after they were given the four in one new flu vax. But wow, that sounds like a conspiracy. Well, if you think the vaccine industry that's fraudulent, controlled by a drug cartel medical mafia that's now running a medical tyranny around the world, that's dictating what you can, that you can't even go out of your house after 8 p.m. in Melbourne, Victoria, and other countries, and soon to be coming the door new year is the new Gestapo, then you have been misled, folks. So there you have it, the new Oxford uh, vaccine has been paused because it has adverse reactions. It's never going to be safe. None of them will be safe. There is no magic cure coming for COVID other than wake you up out of stupidity. Those who still think it's a health threat. It's not a serious health threat. Yes, we've dealt with viruses before. Yes, it can kill, but uh, so does stupidity. You have one in 19.4 million chances of dying of COVID if you're in a high-risk group of 50 to 64 years age group when the latest studies come out yet you have a one in 114 chance of dying in a car accident. So really, folks, really, do you, do you think these excessive lockdowns have anything really to do with the virus? You know they're not. Even if you didn't know, intuitively know that. Your mainstream media is lying to them. Contact all advertisers of mainstream media now if you want something to do in Australia. Demand they pull their advertising uh, because mainstream media is our enemy. They are traitors. They are uh, treasonous and have them shift their advertising to independent media, such as Australian National Review, etc. We need to compete with multi-billion dollar uh, foreign funded media organizations to expose the truth. We need your help. Independent news sites need your help. We are not for profit. Support us, but contact those advertisers and say, if you don't pull your advertising and shift it to people speaking the truth, we will not support your product. So folks, there's many things you can do and I'm gonna tell you more of them in future videos, but that is one thing you can do. Also support us, AustralianNationalReview.com. We need uh, to help you spread the word uh, and educate mass awareness and we can maintain and support the democracy we're rapidly losing. Democracy that Victoria has lost now to failed fascist surveillance police state under martial law, um, under a dictatorship of Dan Andrews. Folks, we must stand up. If you're in Victoria, here's my simple message. If you're in Victoria, I can't tell you what to do, but it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. If you think you're coming out of lockdown any near, near, near time soon, or you're maybe about to open your businesses or restaurants, unfortunately, you're not. Um, if you can get out of Victoria, if I was been living in Victoria, I lived there for 15 years up until a couple of years ago, which I'm glad I got out of there. Most of my friends live in Victoria. I would be making plans to escape. Uh, there's going to be Victorian refugees escaping that failed state. And uh, if you think it's going to get better and just hang on a little bit longer, mm, unless something dramatically happens, uh, you are now living in a communist hotel in future, which the rest of us can look forward to living under unless we fight back. Folks, I am serious. We need help. I am... Can, you must participate in your own risk, rescue business community. If you don't seriously start supporting independent media and the things that I'm supporting, Australian National Review, I don't have the resources I used to have. Uh, deep State, dodgy ASIC and dodgy factions of mainstream media I stole a large amount, tens of millions of dollars assets off me and my investors five years ago because I stood up and warned people about what was coming to Australia, but not enough people listened. And I'm very good at predicting the future. If you doubt that, go and look at my track record. Uh, and I'm telling you, folks, we have a problem. 
If you don't realize Victoria is part of a global conspiracy and no longer a theory, a global political agenda, then you're not going to figure it out. Oh, you think it's still just about a virus? That's why you can't figure it out, folks, because it never was about a virus. It's not about a virus. You are part of a, a global politicized virus which has a political agenda. The questions you should be asking, what is that political agenda? And the sooner you can figure that out, the sooner you know what the hell's going on. Because if you're flying blind, it's dangerous. And too many of you in Victoria and in other parts of the world are flying blind. You need to figure this out. So come on that journey, learn, get educated. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for your support. We need your help. AustralianNationalReview.com support that and independent media and contact advertisers, mainstream media and force them. So you'll boycott their product and they don't boycott advertising on mainstream media. Talk to you soon.